super nice to meet you. And yeah, I'm you too. To this platform to talk to your your um, coaches. And awesome. Well, I'm gonna. Leslie um, is on, and it looks like. Okay, we're live. All right, guys, welcome to our April end of the month call. I appreciate appreciate you guys for jumping on. And um, this this evening we have the honor of having Kim Danger on the call. She is a five star qualifying coach. She lives in Minnesota with her husband and two children. She'll tell you a little bit more about herself, but she's also certified in PIO and P90X. And um, Kim and I are both in the, um, I can't even think right now, it's the NLC, the New Leaders Conference page. Um, and you guys know when I went in January, that was a great way for me to start networking with other people in the business. And um, I was really looking for some content to share with our team because I know that we are really looking at growing and branding was one of the things that was expressed for um, a desire to grow on. And so um, Kim almost immediately reached out and said that she would do it. So I'm excited to, to learn from her. Um, ask any questions in the chat. I know she has some prepared from Jen. Um, but before that, I just want to cover a couple things. I don't know if you guys saw, but Carl, he's been doing um, a Stella Challenge pack. Someone and their challenger are winning $500, and they're announcing it. And so there are two people of one may have missed today because I haven't been on too much. Um, he also just announced that um, in the month of May, they're going to be giving away 40 coaches to 40 different coaches through the, that are um, enrolling people in my challenge tracker app. So I haven't had a chance to totally check it out, but um, as I have more details, I'll post it in the page. Also, I want to share it in your team page by helping people um, get familiar and start with track lesson. So I posted a live video about um, making this. This is we can do it. Absolutely, reach out to people. Uh, I was working with um, Charmaine today, and she said that she reached out to she's going to reach out to two people more. So I challenged her to reach out to ten, and, and then she came back and said, "Guess what? I did fourteen, and now I have two people interested." So was allowing self-doubt to creep in and I helped her talk herself out of that and gave her some tools of what to do. It's really just going back to the basics of the four body behaviors, having those conversations. Remember, one conversation can make all the difference in the world. And when people are talking themselves out of it, I promise you, you have a you have tools and the ability to, to help them see that. Because I had a girl today who was like, I really want to do the 21 day fix. I've been following you, but I, I won't stick to it. And I said, so basically what you're saying is you, you're already telling yourself you're going to fail. I want you to change your language. And by the end of the conversation, she's like, okay, I'm in. I'm going to do it. Thank you. So, and dig deep because for us, for her, we figured out it was more of anxiety and stress in her life that was making her gain weight, fast food, and junk food, and all these other medical conditions that she's going through. Um, if you have not got the way everybody's in the wall and um there is right now everyone that is getting off at the 195 ticket price versus the 295 ticket price and you only have seven days to register so don't miss that if you can get on the silver track please do that's what we have decided to do if not we'll work through it we're gonna have lots of time as a team together um, if you are coming in Thursday, please make it a point to hit Success Club five or high, higher in the month of June or July so that you can join the luncheon at Margaritaville. That is the qualification. So it's June or July Success Club five. It's not and, it's or. I know you guys, I want to see everyone there. It was a lot of fun last year at, um, where were we, Leslie? Blue BB Kings. Um, and there's also... Um, different parties that you can qualify for. So I think there's a team leader party instead of a two-star party. Um, so going and checking the facts on that, Heather and I were having a lot of conversation around that. Um, and then finally, I'm going to be gone. Leslie and I are traveling to Houston 
um, not this next Friday, but the Friday after um, for Houston Core. And Sagi's going to be there. Barbie, Cavell, his wife. Uh, there's going to, Mindy's going to be speaking. There's going to be lots of um, really great info that we're going to be able to bring back to you. I'm really, really excited for this opportunity. And if you're in Sonoma, Lake, Mendocino County, there is a um, women entrepreneur um, seminar next Friday at the Flamingo. It's only like an hour and a half. So tickets are 30 bucks. I would encourage you to get there. And if you're one of my personally sponsored coaches, remember that in addition to your um, Shakeology apron, I also am offering that um, I can't adult today koozie. So let's lock it in, guys. I'm going to stop babbling. And I'm going to turn it over to Kim. All right. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to welcome everybody to the call. And it looks like I've got a few of my own coaches from my own team on the call. And I'm excited that you guys are able to join us. It's always fun to hear another coach and kind of like how Melissa gave the intro and saying a lot of the same things I would say. So it's very cool. But just to give you guys a little bit of a background on me, because you don't know me, um, my name is Kim Danger. I am a blogger. I started out with a site called mommysavers.com when I was 29, which is quite a long time ago because I'm 45 right now. So I got into social media about 16 years ago, and that really is my background. I branded myself as a frugal mommy blogger, and I did really well with that throughout my 30s. I got a few book deals. I did several media tours. Um, I had a really good success with that, and I loved what I did for a while. <laughs> but, you know, like my passion really waned for that. Um, I wasn't clipping coupons anymore. I wasn't changing diapers anymore. And if you're not excited about what you do every day, you just lose enthusiasm for it. And I found myself at about the age of 40, still doing my job, still like not really liking it, um, not being super excited about it. I saw the stats on my blog going down probably because I wasn't personally invested in it. I was really in a personal slump. And that's when Beachbody came along. And so I thought, I'm not a fitness professional. Um, I really don't know the first thing about Beachbody. I'd never done a Beachbody program before, but I just felt compelled to give it a try because I loved, I loved fitness, I loved clean eating, um, and I just thought, what do I have to lose? So I went on a journey to rebrand myself from the frugal mommy blogger to being the fitness blogger. So, and the reason why I tell you this story is just to give you a little bit of a background and, you know, just the fact that I branded myself one way and now I'm in the process of rebranding myself. So I do feel like I have a little bit of expertise and knowledge to bring to the table. Um, I have a marketing degree too, so this isn't like um, something that's completely new to me. I love marketing. I love learning about the whole process and the thought process behind um, the whole thing. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. So would it be possible to do a screen share, Melissa? Because I do have some slides to share with you guys. Okay. Yeah, you got it. Um, Get it. Leslie might have to give you right since she's okay. the host and recording. Let me see here. Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay, so, cool. Let me see if, hang on. Okay, can you guys see, um, oh, sorry, my cat is like bumping my little desk here. Okay, can you see my screen now where it says, who are you? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of go through these slides for you. Um, so branding yourself as a fitness coach, what you're really going to want to focus on is what sets you apart from all these other coaches. Because as you guys know, um, here I'm going to try to shrink my screen a little bit. Okay, that's better. So we have 400,000 coaches in the network. So what sets you apart? I mean, you're really going to have to take a deep look at yourself because if someone, if, if someone comes to you and you're like, oh, hey, I'm a beach body coach, they're like, so what? You know, like there are 400,000 of you. So I really want you guys to dig deep and ask yourself, what sets me apart from all the other coaches out there? And kind of start with the basics, like 
you know, with the demographics, and I'm glad Donna's on this call because I've used her picture on here. She's my 57-year-old coach. And part of my personal branding is hitting women over the age of 40 or 50 because I feel like that's what really sets me and my team apart. So that is one thing, age, it could be, you know, marital status, are you newly engaged, you know, do you live in the country, the city, what's your lifestyle like, um, what are you interested in? So these are all types of things that you can really ask yourself as far as like what makes you different from other beach body coaches. So from there, I want you to take, a, take those things about yourself and create a brand persona. And when I talk about a brand persona, I'm talking about a person that you want to target as a client, not necessarily as a coach, because we all know that our challengers and our clients become the best coaches out there. So we're talking about people that you want to help. These are people that are like you. And I'm going to give you my example, because my example is Claire Dunphy from Modern Family. I feel like I can relate to her on so many different levels. She's a mom of teenagers. She has been married. I mean, like in so many ways, I feel like she's like me. So I use her as my brand persona. Her interests, her hobbies, her favorites, and her day-to-day -day life really closely reflects my own. So I guess my point in that is kind of pick a person. You can even name them to be the person that you talk to with your social media posts. So when I do a post, I may not always feel like I'm talking to Claire Dunphy, but you know what? Like if, if I'm pulling one from thin air, I'm like, okay, what would I tell Claire in this situation? How would I motivate her? How would I inspire her? So it does help to have that persona in mind and it really does help to have someone that you can relate to. Um, so for me, mine is Claire. <laughs> Um, so from there, you've got your brand persona, but then the next step would be what does your Claire or what does your brand persona need help with? Um, because this is where you're really going to do your connecting. What are her daily struggles? Um, you know, like, so for me, if it were Claire Dunphy, I'd be like, well, she's strapped for time. She's shuttling kids in her minivan. You know, she doesn't have a whole lot of extra time to portion out things in the 21 day fix containers. So those would be her struggles when it comes to the coaching and the um, 21 day fix, which is my main program that I promote. What does she dream about and how can you best support her? So you really want to get inside her head. And when you do your post, really kind of speak to that, you know, speak to what she's, what she's um, aiming for in life. You know, I know um, if you watch Modern Family, Claire recently went back to work and is trying to redefine herself after 40. So that's a big part of, of my personal brand too. So not to hype on the Claire Dunphy thing, but if that gives you guys a little bit of perspective in how I think about branding, it is very helpful. You know, and it doesn't have to be a fictional TV character. It could be someone that you know in real life, too. You can name them whatever you want. You can pick out a picture. But it is important to ask those questions. You know, what makes them tick? What are their struggles? And all sorts of things like that. Um... And when it comes to branding, I really, really want you guys to focus. I don't want you to try to be all things to all people because your message gets so watered down when you do that. Um, you just think about, okay, let, let's take Rush Limbaugh, for example. You know, he definitely doesn't, he doesn't try to appeal to Democrats. He's definitely a conservative. He sometimes is offensive to women. But he knows his market, and he's got a loyal band of followers because they think like him. I'm not condoning what he says, but he's just an example of someone that could be polarizing to a lot of people. But in doing that, he has garnered so much attention and so many loyal fans in doing that. And in doing that, you build such a strong brand identity. You don't want to be watered down. Like if you are trying to, um, I don't know, just like when you think about just the general thing of a coach, you really have to set yourself apart and you have to, um, you know, the, the, the more narrow your niche is, the better off you're going to be. So don't be afraid of really kind of zeroing in on the people that you want to talk to. 
And that doesn't mean that those are going to be the only people you attract. Even though I kind of zero in on women over 40, I have so many clients in their late 20s and 30s. And it doesn't mean that they can't relate to me. Maybe they can relate to me on a different level. Maybe something I else I've said has, has um, struck a chord within them. So you don't have to be afraid that you're going to be um, – excluding people because it in fact it really works the the other way you're going to find that your message resonates with more people the more specific that you are so once you've got your brand persona narrowed down i want to think about your visual identity and so that would go along with the fonts and the colors and the logos that you use on all your social media posts and you know, for most of us, that's Facebook. I also really, really encourage my coaches to have a blog because for me, blogging is really the only area of internet real estate that you really own. Facebook can go away. Um, Twitter's algorithms change, Pinterest changes. Um, it, you know, like we all rely on these social platforms, but really, if you own a blog, that's your own little piece of the internet pie. So. I, if, if you do anything other than Facebook, I would suggest you get a blog. And when you do that, I want you to think about your visual identity. And one thing that can really help is just taking a picture of, or like going through your magazines and figuring out, well, okay, for me, what would Claire Dunphy read? And if it, for you, it's a different persona, what are their favorite magazines? And maybe just kind of scrolling through and taking a look at the fonts and the layouts in the different colors that they use that can really help you build your visual identity. So it's great to be consistent when you do this, use a lot of the same fonts all the time. Um, as far as logos go, if you have a URL for your blog, use that logo as much as you can. You don't have to spend a lot to get a logo made. There are services like Fiverr and um, Elance, which is now, um, has rebranded it has a different name which I can't think of right now but there are all sorts of sources where you can get a logo done inexpensively so I would use that and just really use that for inspiration even like looking at the wording that they use key phrases things like that can really help with your visual identity and keep it clean I, I see too many coaches make making the mistake of doing too much, making their pages and their posts look a little bit too cluttered. So take your cues from some of these magazines because I think that can be really helpful. Um, okay, so we've talked a little bit about brand persona and your visual identity, but ultimately the content that you provide, which is your wording and your text, that is what is going to be king. Content is king, which is one thing that I learned in a lot of my blogging seminars that I've been to. So. I want you guys to think about this. Okay, so when you write a post, what will be the purpose of the post? Will it be to inspire your reader? Will you be informing them, entertaining them? And it doesn't have to necessarily be one thing all the time, but don't just do random posts. I see a lot of coaches like just posting pics of their Shakeology or their workout which, you know, that's great. You know, it lets us know that you're in the game and you're doing the vital behaviors, but I do want you to have more of a purpose in the back of your mind. Otherwise, people are going to tune you out. So kind of think about that. Um, what tone are you going to use? Um, and of course, I want this to be natural and I want this to be something that feels like, some, like you'd be talking to a friend. Are you more of a cheerleader type? Do you, you know, maybe you are like a personal trainer or maybe you're a nutritionist or something like that. Well, then maybe it's okay to come across as an expert because you are that voice of authority. Do you want to just go along and hold their hand and be their friend? So kind of think about that when you're doing your posts and your tone, like try to stay consistent with this. And it's okay to switch from cheerleader to friend and kind of be a little bit of both, but it's just something else for you to think about when you're creating your content. And I also really want you guys to think about your mission and your brand mission. And when I talk about your brand, I don't mean your Beachbody brand. I mean your personal brand because um, this is really important, you guys. Beachbody could go away. And you, we all are on this call because we love Beachbody. We're coaches. We've totally invested in it. 
but if they were to shut their doors tomorrow, I want you guys to have something to fall back on. I want you guys to bring your clients with you to the next thing that you do, and I want them to be following you because of you, not because of Beachbody. And we all know that Beachbody is great and their programs are great, and of course that's why we're here, but that's not why people list you as their coach. They list you as your coach for all those other reasons because there are, like I said, 400,000 other coaches out there. So if you are yourself and you're offering all this great advice, you have to be you. So what is your personal mission? Beachbody's mission is to help people achieve their goals and enjoy healthy, fulfilling lives, which is great. And I think we can all get on board with that. But I really want to ask you guys this. What would be your personal miss mission in creating your own personal brand? So when you think about your mission and your content and your tone, that can really drive all of the posts that you do on social media. Okay, so we've kind of covered the persona and the visual identity and the tone and all, all those great things. So now what do we do? We want to put this into practice. So. Your brand identity statement is going to be your driver. And that's kind of what I just talked about. And creating the consistency of message with your purpose and your tone and your visual identity, it's a great idea to take that and write that down and have that in a place where you can reference it frequently so that people will see that, that, that whenever you do a post, they'll, they'll remember. It will be eye-catching. They'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, I've seen that before it will have some sort of consistency of message. Um, hashtags are great to use when you're thinking of different things that really set you apart as a coach. Say you wanna capitalize on fit over 50. Well, there are tons of hashtags out there related to that topic. Fit over 50, you know, moms fit over 50. I mean, I'm not gonna go through them all. There are programs that you can do to research hashtags and things like that. And with that, with those special topics that you're using to target your own niche, you can target Facebook ads. If you have a Facebook like page, you can target certain, um, for example, like if I do a Facebook like page ad, I can boost it to people that like Lululemon or Real Simple Magazine, things that my Claire Dunphy persona would actually like. So you can use those things as leverage to promote your Beachbody posts. And also when I do challenge groups, I come up with my own templates and I really cater them to my own demographics in my own target market. For example, I'm doing um, with Donna, we're doing a fit over 50 group right now. So, you know, we're, I'm in my forties, she's in her fifties. So we're totally leveraging that with our, our challenge group. So I want to, Re, you know, just kind of encourage you guys to do that too. If you have something that sets you apart, use it to your advantage and cater your challenge groups to those things. And lastly, I think this is my last slide here, and then I'll open it up for questions. I just want you guys to be open to change. Um, do not feel like because you don't have your brand persona or your niche tightly defined that you can't just get in and give it a little bit of a whirl and see what happens because your brand will be constantly evolving just like we as people are always changing and you know like your brand is going to change and that's kind of why I did my little intro in the beginning and said that I came at this being a frugal mommy blogger and here I'm a fitness blogger now and it's kind of a weird evolution but if I hadn't been open to that change I would not be in the position that I am right now so with that said, um, I also want you to let your clients and your challengers drive a lot of what you do because I'm always reaching out to them and asking them, well, what do you want? Do you want more of this? I look at my stats on my blog and I see which posts get the most traction and I see which posts get the most engagement. So I use that as information as far as where I should take my brand. You know, I'm like, oh, my followers are loving 21 Day Fix, so it would be silly for me to drop those posts and totally go with Body Beast. Um, you know, things like that. Like, just, um, you know, of course you want your own passion and your own drive to fuel all of this, but you also have to be receptive to other people and be open to change. And just to leave you with the point that your brand will evolve as you do, and your brand is your culture. 
So you be the embodiment of what you want your challengers to be, and you will attract not only the challengers, but the coaches that you want. So with that, I'm gonna stop the share and I'll open it up to questions. Hopefully you guys have some. Um, that was amazing. Um, so I, my first question was, um, how easy is it to start a blog? Okay, well, and that's a tough question for me because I've been in it for so long. Like, I started HTML back in 2000. So, um, right now, it is so much easier than it used to be. You literally can start a blog in like half an hour. And most of us, because we're coaches already and we're pretty well versed in social media, it's not that hard. Um, I really recommend people go with the WordPress. Um, content management system because it is basically what the standard is with professional bloggers that's all my friends in the professional blogging world use WordPress there's a little bit more of a, a learning curve with that but it is worth it <laughs> it's kind of like all these people start on I would definitely not go with blogger um, you know some people go with Wix which I think is really easy to start right away but ultimately WordPress is the way to go and it's not it's not super easy to learn but it's worth it in the long run in my opinion awesome. if you people to help you with it you really can like it doesn't cost that much to hire a programmer to help you get it started um, and then it's pretty much just copy and paste if you know how to do like a word document it's really that easy so Awesome, thank you. Okay, so the next question is from Jennifer, and it says, are there any specific requirements to be able to promote Beachbody on my blog? Does Beachbody have to approve your blog first? No, um, Beachbody is very, very lenient as far as what they will allow. I mean, there are a lot of compliance things, like you can't make income claims. I know that Beachbody is really, really, um, they've kind of hammered that, home with us a lot in like you know the diamond and above groups um so anytime you do an income post you have to put the disclaimer on that um you know they're they're i really haven't come into it it kind of depends on what you're talking about but if you're just doing like 21 day fix recipes or if you're doing you know like you can put ads on there for beach body they're completely fine with that i really can't think of too many things that they don't allow you to do um, Melissa, do you have a blog? I don't. No, it's definitely been something that I've been thinking about doing. Um, actually, somebody approached me a couple weeks ago and was like, you really should start a blog. And I'm like, I wouldn't even know where to start. So this is a perfect yeah. Um, Okay, what do you do on a blog? Well, basically, I kind of just consider it my home base for everything. I hey, just... Oh, um, I did a long Facebook post today on some of my Facebook groups and I just put it onto my blog because this is like my home base. This is the place where I keep everything that I own on the internet. I will, what's great about your blog is there, there's an analogy of the octopus, okay? So the head of the octopus is your blog and all the eight tentacles, those are the different social media facets. So. Your, the head of the, the social media world is your blog, and that's like the thing that owns and operates everything. Or you could think of it like as the hub of a wheel. It's what you own, and then as you reach out, then you go into the, all these other areas that you don't own. I mean, I think of like my blog is my home base, and if I, read, if I wanna go to the bar, if I wanna go to school, if I wanna go to the library, these are all places I don't own, but I meet people there. Like, I might meet people at Snapchat, so let's think of that as the bar, right? But if I want to bring them home with me, that's my blog. So your blog is the place that you really own and you have true control over. And I also highly recommend getting an email list going because that's another great marketing tool. And you can put that on your blog as well. And I do get a lot of traffic from Pinterest. So every blog post that I do, I pin on Pinterest. So I get a lot of traffic that way too. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I was just listening to a podcast the other day where Shaleen was talking about um, the biggest mistake that people make in network marketing is they don't have an email list. And just like you were saying at the beginning of the, of the talk was that if Beachbody was to shut their doors tomorrow, 
how efficient would you be and could you contact those customers or if Facebook said guess what you don't get to run your business off this anymore and we're shutting you down like mm -hmm. and that's a really 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 good point to make is yeah. you, know what? you guys I've learned it the hard way I've been in social media long enough that I've seen this happen and <laughs> I have learned it the hard way I have been in you know I've been on Facebook since about you know, day one, I started, I could barely get over 10 friends because I didn't know anybody that was on it yet. I had people in Silicon Valley that were my friends. So, I mean, it was, it was a completely different environment back then. And back then everybody saw what you posted in your feed. And now they have the edge rank algorithm so that your posts are weighted and it depends on how many people like and engage with your posts that actually see it. So Facebook has really gotten in the game and they, they control who sees your stuff. But if people go to your blog and they know where to find you, you have control of that. Facebook doesn't. So for me, that's reason enough to have a blog just because like that is the one thing I control. If something were to go astray with all these other social networks, people know where to find me online. Awesome. Does anyone else have any other questions? I know we're getting right down to the wire and I want to be respectful of the time. Okay. My final last question then would be um, for like making your, um, your visuals. Mm -hmm. Where did you start with that? Because I've been working with people and I don't know if you struggled with this. You've been doing this a lot longer than I have. But graphics, like, I'm not satisfied. And so I'm like, nope, got to keep going. Nope, that's not it. And so it's just really that struggle of um, putting what's in my head into something that's going to represent me. And I also want it to be professional and, you know, any insight? Yeah, I mean, every time I've had a logo done, because I'm not a graphic designer, I've had someone actually do it for me. And there are tons of places online where you can find inexpensive logo design. There are a lot of inexpensive graphic designers out there that will help you. It does help to kind of, like I mentioned, kind of come up with your visual identity. If you're a bright, cheery person, have a lot of energy, you might want to go with like reds and oranges. You know, if you're more subdued and like, you know, maybe blues and greens. I mean, so you want to come up with something for them to go on. And you want to look at those magazines and the interests and kind of have a designer won't know how to help you unless you give them some ideas to start from. So you can start with that and just, you know, maybe give them some examples of what you like and kind of look that you're going for and they can help you out from there. Awesome. All right, guys, going once, twice, three times. Any more questions? Okay. Well, thank you so, so much for taking the time out. I hope you guys have a ton of notes because I know I do. I want to um, really compress this and give myself the rest of the night off. Um, but Kim, thank you and your team for joining. I, there's a Donna. Thank you for jumping on. Um, I really appreciate Congratulations on your five stock qualification. And um, we let's meet up at Summit. Oh, for sure. That'll be fun. Yeah, I have one of my calls soon too, right? Mom? Yes, I do. Yep. Awesome. Absolutely. All right, guys. Have a great evening. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.